she more has entitled to their beliefs or doubt, but my whole thing is like, don't doubt my son when I break up with you because you're disrespectful. I told you this when we was together. No, you did not. I you told you, you, didn't, you didn't start He didn't have my head. My he son, went my way. Kids Free. don't always look the same. Kids don't. Don't. In paternity court, the list of wild things that happen is unending. Believe me, in this situation, Ms. Greenhouse dragged Mr. Thompson's ass to court because he abandoned her child and refused to take the responsibilities of being a father, all because she called off their wedding a month before. She opened her case like this. Ms. Greenhouse, you summoned Mr. Thompson to court for a DNA test for your seven-month-old son, G. Yes, Your Honor. You claim he has neglected his responsibilities as a father since you called off the wedding last month. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, you are also suing Mr. Thompson for $750, the amount of the down payment you put on a vehicle for him. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, they dated for 11 years, and she just called the wedding out of the blue? Something smells very fishy. Mr. Thompson claimed that eight years out of the 11 years, he was the one trying to keep their relationship together. He claimed the major issue with their relationship was Ms. Greenhouse's family. And it's always fell apart because How are you always accusing me of sleeping of with her, somebody? Her, her family and all the rest. You're not in a relationship with my family. You're in a relationship now, with me. That's what I was trying to figure out. But why do they always come up? So how why do, do, they how do, come how up? do your mama... This one and the other sister, how everybody think up? they got more authority how? over me and mom? How? Oh, wow. From Baby Daddy's point of view, Ms. Greenhouse had been sleeping with more than one man around the time she got pregnant with their child. That wasn't the only truth bomb that came out of Baby Daddy's mouth. He claimed during one of their arguments, he confronted her and she admitted to cheating on him. Like I said, around that time, we wasn't together. We was seeing each other a little cordially here and there, but not really. But we yeah, I guess, I guess it was right. maybe it was around, I don't remember uh, exactly the time it was around, but when I came and everything happened, even with leading up to that time, I'd already confronted her and she admitted out her own mouth, out of the, the pictures, the texts, the phones, the messages, what everything. Picture? Get out of the way, Jerome. Baby mama has one hell of a temper. Moving on, Judge Lauren asked baby daddy what he meant by trying to keep the relationship together. He claimed that Ms. Greenhouse never really wanted to be with him. And anytime he tried to bring them back together, she said it was because of the first child they had together. And she used to say, then, you only, you only with me or you only try to keep this together because of SJ, which is my first boy. And uh, that's a lie. That, that's a lie. Man, look at here. Like, like so I said. We was only together because of SJ? This is what you told me multiple times. I told you, you don't that. really want to be with me, Greg. I told you, you only with me Greg. because of SJ. Hmm. Sounds like a lot has been going on in their relationship. Baby Daddy, on the other hand, wasn't done dropping truth bombs. When the case initially started, he claimed her family was one of the major reasons they had issues in their relationship. Well, he decided to dive into that, and here's how he explained that to the judge. When we in, when we in the dirt and we struggling, we come up on a little here and there, she giving money to her, her mom and everybody else. But we, when we in the dark, we my mama give me it. money. My we sister give me money. It. We don't have it. But then, you give your mama money, your sister because brother money. I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here about the honor. baby, man. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Thompson. Greg doesn't give me money. If anything, when they fall on hard times, I help y'all with rent. She definitely stepped on Mr. Thompson's mother's toes because she is furious as hell. She was furious because she was always there trying to help her son and Ms. Greenhouse when they had nothing, and Ms. Greenhouse was trying to deny that ever happening. But baby mama didn't care about any of that. If you had doubt, you should have brought that not seven months later when my son is seven months old. Don't bring doubt seven months later. This, this is, his this is not, this is... Matter of fact, Your Honor, when we I... was in the hospital, Greg asked we... me about his... Can I, can I pro approach that? Yes. 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 Okay, well, can I go show you Come this? On. When yes, I was yes. giving birth to my show son to in the me. hospital, Greg came to me and said, what name do you want? Do you want G-E-E-G-I-E -E -E or G-E-I? And I said G-E-I, and that's my son's name. My son is uh, G. Joaquin. Uh, can they stop arguing already? It's starting to get out of hand. Now, Ms. Greenhouse claimed that when the doubts were starting to get out of hand, she offered to get a DNA test done for the child. But Mr. Thompson turned her down. So she decided to bring up her witness, who could testify to him, denying the DNA test. Here's what the witness had to say. When it came up to them going to the hospital to have G, Chrissy was talking to Greg or whatever. She was like, hey, make sure be, right before they, they brought in the paperwork, they the off the David stuff. She was like, are you sure you want to do that? We can get a DNA test. Greg said, man, shut up. Like, he was excited. Like, man, shut up. For what? 
That's exactly what he said. And you heard that. I was on the phone with her. Their situation keeps going from bad to worse. Now, baby daddy's mother was keeping it real in the courtroom. She said that she was fed up with their back and forth of always having to fight about the paternity of the child. All she wanted was for them to figure things out and do what's best for the baby. G does look exactly like Chrissy. He does. And SJ. This boy has an extra large head. His daddy do, his brothers do. He don't have it. And that might sound a little crazy, a little harsh, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just being honest. As far as him not taking care of his child, Greg is a darn good dad. Stand he he really, be quiet. He really is. At this point, Judge Lorne was already tired of trying to get them to act right. The only thing that could calm their nerves now is the DNA result. With all being said, the results are finally ready to be revealed and the truth will finally be out in the open. Mr. Thompson, you are the father. <laughs> you are the father. I feel more relief. For what and you than, knew this than having, no, I did. I you knew this from jump. You knew I had died some jump. You could see it in his eyes, trust me. Mr. Carroll wanted nothing more for the child to be his. He was in court to prove to his ex-girlfriend that he was the biological father of her 26-year-old daughter. Even though the defendant denied his claim several times, he just refused to accept that he wasn't the father. It all started like this. Mr. Carroll, you are here to prove to your ex-girlfriend, Ms. Goggins, that you are the biological father of her 26-year-old daughter, Sherletha Carroll. Yes, Your Honor. You say when your daughter was five years old, the defendant told you another man was her father, but you refused to believe it. Yes, Your Honor. You saw it for yourself. He wants her to be his daughter so bad. Throughout the years, Mr. Carroll never had any doubts about being her father, even when the defendant told him several times that he wasn't the father. But Ms. Goggins claims she had a one-night stand, and she believes that he is the father of her daughter. This one-night stand is your daughter's father. Why are you so certain? With Jesse, we were basically broken up. And then I end up going to her father saying that I needed someone to talk to. So me and him end up having sex. And I knew that it was the one night stand, the hairdresser. If he was hoping to convince Ms. Goggins about being the father, he definitely failed at that. Her mind was fixed on the fact that he was not and could not be the father of her child. Mr. Carroll recalled their relationship being shaky at the time. And throughout their time together, Ms. Goggins never told him she wasn't his child. Well, me and, me and uh, Tina at that time was still in a relationship. It was just shaky. Lily was five years old and she came over my mother's house and she told me that she had something to tell me. And then she told Lily would go off, she five, so she trying to go off or whatever. She was like, no, Lily, I want Lily to hear this, you know. When she told me Lily was my, not my daughter, Lily was standing right there because I will never forget That's the face that true. she had. Moving on, Ms. Goggins remembered the period when she gave birth to her daughter. Mr. Carroll was in the hospital and he cut the cord. But the moment he saw the baby, he asked Ms. Goggins whose child it was because she was too light-skinned. From that moment on, Ms. Goggins decided that the baby could not be his. Delivery room with me, you seen her and you said, wow, whose baby is this? She's so white. I knew from there that uh, who Shalitha belonged to. No. After I left the hospital with Shalitha, I See. said, Shalitha is not your child. You, you never wanted to listen to me saying that it wasn't your child. Wow. He signed his name on the birth certificate without her knowing. How desperately does he want to be the baby's father? Anyway, Ms. Goggins told the judge that on so many occasions, she told him that the baby was not his, but he just wouldn't listen. He even gave the child his own nickname. My daughter, that's why I'm here today to show people that, that Lily is. She my, doesn't look like and, you. And, she and looks and just like her that, dad. Look, she got my name on that birth certificate. That's my name. She got my name. You put I it on there Lili. without my consent. I gave Lily that name, Lily. That, that nickname, I done that. Lily, that's my nickname. That Shalitha is my family. That's her name from my family. The back and forth between Mr. Carroll and Ms. Goggins was getting too much. So the judge decided to ask the daughter in question if she had ever felt the presence of Mr. Carroll in her childhood. Here's the reply she gave to the judge. Your Honor, yes, I have, but to be honest, Jesse hasn't been in my life. You know, I'm just going off of pictures. You know, basically, pictures, he was there. He was with me as the father, with me and my sister. He was in the home as a, as a family. But as time went on, I was with the guy, which I have proof right here. I was with his family. I, you do? Let me see that proof you have. I was with his family. I went... Well, that complicates the whole situation. At least she told the truth. Ms. Goggins wasn't the only one who believed that he wasn't the father. Mr. Carroll's wife also believed that her husband was not the biological father, and she couldn't understand why he couldn't let go. Your Honor, 
Shalitha is not his daughter. Tina told him, Ms. Goggins told him, she told him years ago that she was not his daughter. And the only way I would know, because I came into the situation after the five year period, somewhere in there, which was, I never would say anything like that. Now that's one plot twist I didn't see coming. If he isn't the father of your child, why send him a letter thanking him for accepting the child? Hmm, something doesn't sound right. Anyways, Judge Lake heard enough of their testimony, so she determined that DNA was vehement in this paternity conflict. Here are the results. Mr. Carroll, you are her father. <laughs> Now I can promise you this is a case you will never forget. After taking care of the defendant's six kids and not being the father of any, he is in court to prove that the defendant is trying to pin her three-month-old child on him. He was sick of the defendant playing for a fool and was no longer willing to be there for her. It all started like this. Mr. Joan, you and your mother are co-plaintiffs who have brought the defendant, Ms. Milan, to court to prove her three-month-old son, Quinnell Jr., is not your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, I contacted the court three days after the baby was born because I watched my son break down at the hospital. You know, he was gonna be devastated if this child wasn't his. Their relationship started from being neighbors. They lived very close to each other, and it was very easy for them to see almost all the time. And just like that, from coming over to see a movie, they started kicking it in bed, and it went on for a really long time. And so how did you two meet? Her mother and my mother was neighbors. When she moved back home with her mom, uh, her mom used to talk to her about me or whatever like that. And then how'd this relationship begin? When I first, you know, moved home with my mom, I noticed him. She was like, you know, this Mr. Jones, he lived next door. We started, you know, just on a friendly note. Hmm. Looks like things really got cozy for both of them, but they weren't particularly on the same page about everything. Mr. Jones didn't see what they had as a relationship. He was basically enjoying the company of his neighbor, but baby mama, on the other hand, felt they had something special. But eventually I seen how I was feeling about Mr. Jones. Even after we had sex or whatever, he was like, he was looking at it as a friendship. But my thing was, I don't have sex with my friends. I thought it was more once I did cut my ex off, so. Baby mama sure said Sounds like she wasn't expecting to get pregnant. Now, along the line, baby mama lost her house and she had nowhere to go. Mr. Jones's mom thought they were dating and she offered to have baby mama and her kids stay with her. It was at a point where uh, they had got to the point where they were serious to the point enough for her and her kids didn't have anywhere to go. So I offered for her and her kids to come to my house. That's how I thought that they were in a relationship with So you me. thought they were in a relationship? Yes, yeah, because it, it, when it, her, time she and her children didn't have anywhere to go, uh -huh. you said they could come and stay with you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well. It doesn't look like Mr. Jones's mother wanted to be an accommodating landlord for a long time, and she made it quite clear. Anyway, Mr. Jones and baby mama's relationship started to fall apart, and somehow, Mr. Jones found himself in the company of his ex. Here's the explanation he gave as to why that happened. Mr. Jones, you took your one girlfriend and her kids moved him into your mother's house, and then went with your ex. Yes, pretty much, that's what yes, he did. Yes, Your Honor. Like you said, I'm young, it's a big age difference. I started getting a little, I got a little, no, stressed out, you know what I'm saying? It's six kids, all boys, plus, plus my mom, my two, my, stu, uh, my two little sisters. She definitely ran out of patience. All right, now, baby mama found she was pregnant, and of course, she reached out to Mr. Jones. But here's the thing, when she told him about the pregnancy, she also dropped a truth bomb, saying that she was intimate with her ex, and there was a chance the baby could also be his. And so how did you find out she was pregnant? She called, she called and told me. I was with my ex, she called and Is told me. Is it still me. your ex when you back, back with her? Back up, I live. I'm gonna tell you. Was, she's still Yarn. my ex. We wasn't together. When, when, I, when I was with my ex, she, we wasn't together. It just, we had, we, we had a, a well, long we separated. I live. relationship. We can't deny the fact that Mr. Jones is a good father. He might've been messing around with his ex, but he sure knows how to be a good dad. Baby mama then went on to say that she actually told her ex she was pregnant before she told Mr. Jones. She went about it like this. The ex that he potentially could be the father too? I told him first. You know, he was. I was around him at the time. I was feeling sick and I was like, you know, I knew I hadn't been out there that long also. But I did go to the store and get a pregnancy test and it came out positive. I ended up telling Mr. Jones also. And you know, he 
did his talking or whatever, but he ended up texting. It was like, okay. Mr. Jones is one lucky man to have a mom like his who is constantly looking out for him. Mr. Jones and his mother were hoping that the DNA results would reveal that Mr. Jones was the father of the child. If it were revealed otherwise, they would be completely heartbroken. So what are your hopes, Mr. Jones and Miss Jones? Do you hope the child is yours? Yes. I pray. We, we've been taking care of this child since the day he came out, Jim. I love him. And we're gonna, we're gonna we, I, I will continue to do that. I just want my son to be sure that this is his child. Isn't he just a sweet man? The only way to determine the truth about the baby was to uncover the secret DNA envelope was holding. So let's get those results. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm like... You okay, Mr. Jones? Ms. Seaton dragged her mother to court because she believed her mother committed paternity fraud. Apparently, there was no trust between Ms. Seaton and her mother, and she was desperate to know who her real father was. Are you ready? I bet you are. Let's get on with it. Ms. Seaton, you've brought your mother to court because you claim she committed paternity fraud and lied to you about the identity of your biological father. You were raised believing one man was your father, but are here to prove another is your dad. You've petitioned the court for for a paternity test to finally prove the truth. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It felt like Ms. Seaton and Ms. McPeak, who happened to be her mother, shared almost no love at all. Ms. Seaton claimed she had not seen her mother in almost five years. Damn, that's a really long time to go without seeing your mother. Trust me. She even called her a lair. Ms. Seaton, how do we get to this point? Well, Your Honor, um, I just want to start by saying I haven't seen her talk to this woman in five years, almost, almost five years. Um, the reason that I haven't seen her talk to her in, in almost five years is because she's a liar. I was raised to think that a man named Jesse Seaton was my biological father. You could see the tension between the two ladies in the courtroom. Being that they haven't had any relationships in over five years, they couldn't even maintain eye contact with each other. Trust me, that's just really sad. I wouldn't want to be in those shoes. Why do you look like she's not telling the truth, Miss McPeak? It's untrue. How do you respond? Because she's a liar. She always has been. She does whatever she can to hurt anybody. She doesn't have a heart at all. But is she lying about the hospital saying there's not yes. a match? Yes, she is. Liar. Uh, <laughs> Your Honor, I would just like to say uh, my grandmother did submit a statement if you would like to look over that. Ms. McPeak wasn't having any of that. She stood her ground and said everything her daughter was saying was all in her head and there was no truth to it. She hit the nail on the head and called her a big ass lair. Damn. She's a, just as big as liar as her granddaughter. <laughs> Plain and simple. She never thought that I was good enough for a son. He could have had DNA at that time, and he didn't want DNA. He said he was 100% sure it was his. Now, Ms. Seaton was just talking out in the wind. She was firm. She listed instances that made everyone doubt if her mother was actually telling the truth. Trust me, you wouldn't believe the things that were said in that courtroom. They were mind-blowing. However, had told me uh, more than, on more than one occasion that she had DNA done between me and Mr. Seaton. She also told uh, my grandmother, Karen, and when asked about the result, um, I contacted our local um, DNA centers and um, did some research, and they have no DNA. Oh, come on! What exactly are Ms. Seaton and Ms. McPeak playing at? What exactly is their aim here? They're just going round in circles, calling each other layers. At this point, it's really hard to believe who might be telling the truth. How close in proximity were you intimate with both of these men, or is it your assertion you weren't intimate with both of these men? I lived with Greg Bryson at the time I met Jesse and we were friends and we just started going out as friends and it was very close in time because I had to go home and throw Greg out and he moved right across the street from me. <laughs> now Mr. Bryson walks into the courtroom and he believes he is really Ms. Seaton's father. He doesn't just believe he is her father. He has some really powerful statements to back up his claim. Oh boy, this was one hell of a paternity case. Do you believe you are Miss Seaton's, Jessica's biological father? Yes, I can guarantee you, Your Honor. You do? Oh, yes. Why do you believe that? Look at her. She looks like my other daughter. I guarantee you, the money I got in my pocket, she's mine. Secondly, the grandmother, Jesse's mother, told me if she's between the ages of six and ten, that she knew that that was my daughter, not her son. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty as to whether their stories and claims were true or not. Time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. The biological father is Mr. Thank you.
Where was you all your life? You lie. I never once. Okay. <laughs> Just hug your daughter. You can stay with what your daughter. What did you lie? <laughs>